Welcome back to Last Bastion Labs. I'm Tim. We all know that adding stickers to our vehicle adds at least 20 horsepower, but when you add decals to your mill, we gain at least 5 ten thousandths of accuracy. Check out my new toy, courtesy of the wife unit, the MicroArc 4th Axis from Tormach. Hashtag not sponsored. Having a 4th Axis gets us two primary capabilities. One, let's say we're putting in a pocket. Once we're done with that feature, we can rotate the part, whether it's 90 degrees, 45 degrees, or 17.46 degrees, to put in the next feature. We don't have to pull the part out and put it in the vise. The second capability is simultaneous fourth axis machining. Primarily, the part actually rotates while the cutting tool transverses over the work, giving you motion in four axes. We start by referencing the part relative to the machine. This is so cool. Right now I'm doing nothing. Pathpilot is doing all the hard work. I'm going to start off with something easy. I'm going to put six flats on the end of the cylinder. I should point out that I'm really just following the John Saunders uh, syllabus for fourth axis machining. This was a similar part that he did. One down, five to go. What's important to understand at this point is if I was doing this part horizontally, I would have had to have six different setups in order to get these flats in. But with fourth axis machining, once I've done it once, I just copy the pattern and say enter six, and it does all the work for me. Less time doing setups means that I can have more quality time with the wife unit, which is why she got this for me. With the adaptive toolpath complete, We'll clean up the edges with a 2D contour. And now the micro arc is moving back to A0, or the original start position. The surface finish is actually smoother than it looks. At the end of the video, I'll measure flat to flat to see how well we did. Now on to something a little harder. We're going to put a pocket in on this cylinder, and what's significant about this is that the floor of the pocket will actually be curved, matching the same curvature of the diameter of the cylinder. This is my design team, Scout and Skyla. With the pocket test complete, we'll move on to adding a helix. Now I know what you're going to say. Tim, I don't think I'm finding this near as exciting as you are. And you would be correct. At this point, I'm really just trying to make this machine one of my minions. We'll now clean up that wall with a 2D contour. I mean, how cool was that? Now anyone who knows anything about machining knows that chamfers are cool. So why don't we put in a few chamfers on this part?
Our final trick for today will be engraving onto a curved surface. And now it's time for the part dismount. Now the cool kids on the interwebs like to tab this part out, meaning that they remove all the material until they leave just a very, very thin sliver of a tab so that the part actually goes thwang when you touch it. That's our goal here for today. Let's see if it works out. You can't see it, but right now I'm doing the happy dance. Next time we'll go a little bit thinner. This really should have broken off a lot easier than that. Off camera, I went ahead and cleaned up that back surface on the lathe. All in all, I'm not entirely unpleased. This actually was my first attempt at machining using all four axes. Now let's check the accuracy from flat to flat. I was shooting for 1.5 inches and it looks like I came in about one thou under and that's not surprising considering how much stick out I had on the part. Luckily it seems to be consistent from flat to flat. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera really well, but the floor finish in a pocket wasn't near as good as the floor finish that came from the slotting routine. Well, that's about it. Bravo Zulu to the folks at Tormach. This is a really great machine, and I am really excited about what I'm going to be able to do with it. If you think I earned it, please give me a thumbs up, and... Uh, feel free to subscribe. I'm Tim from Last Bastion Labs. See you next time.